Kiara Koto. Yiridu Marang Ninduga, Jazz Yuan Nadi, Radri Yina Baladu, Tefanga Nui, Atara Nurumbang Warana. Sorry, that was Wiradjuri, which is my grandmother's language. Um, my nation is in the place now known as New South Wales, Australia. Um, this is my boss, Jean-Pierre Chabrol. We come from the Museum of Contemporary Art in Sydney. And uh, in that acknowledgement then, I just thanked the ancestors and caretakers of this place um, for their ongoing care of the skies, waters and land. Um, I also want to say a special acknowledgement to the Kaningu elders of Western Arnhem Land, of whose sacred stories and knowledges we'll be discussing in this talk, which is about the wonderful John Mwanjul. John or Balang, which is his skin name, we'll probably refer to him interchangeably as John or Balang, is a Kaningu elder and lawman um, and a really remarkable contemporary artist. Uh, his stories are very sacred, very contemporary, and it's a real honour to talk about them. Um, and there's also an acknowledgement that we can play now of, of John's. Uh, so, the context of Australia is very different to the, the context here, as, um, as I'm realising increasingly while we're here, which is that in Australia we have more than 250 uh, independent Aboriginal nations and Torres Strait Islander nations, and more than 600 dialects. So doing things in language is different in Australia to how it is here. Um, I wish it was more like here. I wish that there was a bilinguality that was embedded in our society. Uh, we're not there yet. Um, so what we're going to talk about in this presentation briefly is how we worked with John and his uh, Kaningu community in Manangrida to develop uh, the exhibition, but more, more specifically the digital resources that accompanied it. The, the adventure uh, of this digital resource, and especially the exhibition, uh, came from a long, long way. So the MCA had a long relation with, uh, with Balang, and uh, they start to uh, collect uh, works in 88, and Balang did start to be collected in different organizations from 83. So they, he was quite young, he was 30... 83, so it would be 31. <laughs> um, and so this, this long kind of a relation with contemporary art uh, did enforce the way we were going to work with them. It's what we're doing at the MCA. We work with living artists and we try to focus uh, only on the artist and the, the artist will and the artist uh, voice. Um, so of course, the digital resource was built around the exhibition and for a purpose of serving this exhibition and also uh, uh, two partners. There were two partners in, in the show. I'm just, we're going, just going to show you a little trailer, which was kind of a, the marketing process of uh, showing the, the show. <laughs> So during that process of uh, building the exhibition and the relation, which was pretty much during three years of, of organizing the exhibition and, and for us in, in terms of the digital department during two years, um, quite quickly we knew the title, which was coming from him which was very much, I am the old and the new. Uh, so how to bring the old uh, uh, culture and his, his painting, which represents something very, very specific, to a new form and to a way that we were going to um, make the curatorial voice, if I can say that way, or, or any voice uh, disappear and have only his voice and his painting and his drawings. Um, there are quite 
interesting uh, quote from uh, A.T. Perkins. Uh, we had a long, we had the long relation with him uh, during years, and he did an exhibition a long time ago at the MCA with him. Um, so it's an interesting read. It, it was an interesting challenge working with an artist who um, is interne internationally very well recognised. Uh, Balang's the only Australian artist to ever have two solo shows in Europe, but simultaneously is not a household name in Australia and had never had a, a major show in Australia. Um, so we were we were working with a contemporary artist who speaks a multitude of languages, uh, none of which are English with a, a great deal of fluency, um, who has a really rich biography um, and an incredibly large body of work, but we wanted to do him justice in the way that he, that he asked, and he said very deliberately to us very early on, to know me you need to know Gningu, which is his language and his cosmology. And um, Gningu cosmology does not translate easily into a Western context, so we, we needed to bring the dignity and gravitas to that without reducing it in any way. Um, the screen that we just had then was of the Maningrida area in Western Arnhem Land where Balang lives. Um, it is one of the most linguistically complex places on earth. Maningrida town alone has um, 12 language groups that are spoken daily there. And the community is, um, the, the cosmology of the community is so rich um, that we, and it's depicted largely in Balang's work. He paints um, a lot of sacred stories that are embedded with a lot of esoteric knowledge. Um, that, that talk of ceremony and talk of tradition. Uh, as a non Kaningu person, I can't read that information, but we wanted to bring that complexity to the project. One thing that came quite quickly in the exhibition process and, and, and in the catalogue, and we did want to, to serve in, in the digital space, is the notion of places and or location. And you can see on this map different, uh, on the big bigger letters are the language, and you also got the place. So you, you see on the bottom left, Guningo, uh, you got places like Mumeka, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And those places did were kind of the metadata in some way, if I can say that, at that crowd, uh, of the artwork. So, and, but the places were also very important. So we had to design the entire things from the places to the artwork to the, to the voice. Which was something that was reflected in the curation of the exhibition itself. So rather than going chronologically or any other way that an exhibition can be laid out, uh, as you walked through the exhibition, you walked through significant places around Maningrida and the artworks that responded to those places. Um, so that, yeah, that is what we reflected in the digital resource. There was a, a lot of work, and thanks to one man, which was uh, Dr. Murigard, which is uh, on the picture here on the left, who did a massive work in terms of tr translation and transliteration of all the, the, the discussion we had with uh, Balang Man uh, Maranjol. Uh, you need to remember that Balang English is very simple and poor, so everything was done in language. Um, the exhibition was totally bilingual, which was kind of a premiere for Australia uh, it, because of the complexity of it, because of the diversity of the languages. So you see a few, few images of the, the exhibition. Uh, Balang did around more than 1,000 works in his life, and this was a, a, a 10 percent of his representation. There was a digital resource with a video. It was two locations. He went to Adelaide, and he's touring at the moment during two years around Australia. That's, that's the language and the digital resource part. And of course, all the locations were mapped through the exhibition. So each number, in fact, here is a location, is a place. So if you were to go to the website right now, jamawanjul.com, you'd find um, a, a very complex amount of d data that I think is presented quite simply. We have a 40-minute documentary film that we shot uh, all in Manangrida with Balang speaking Kaningu to his friend, Dr. Mari Gard. Uh, there wasn't any interruption of, of English or of like the curator sort of jumping in there. It was just one person explaining his life's work and artwork to his friend. Um, the process of translating that was joyously complex, but like so, <laughs> um, So you'd find that documentary, you'd find a, a glossary of Giningu, which um, as the project went on, we realised that was sort of the key to, to lots of parts of the exhibition was uh, the artworks are all 
Guningu words and to sort of understand even remotely what you're getting at with these words that have no English translation or no simple English translation. We needed to have a glossary that um, allowed Balang to speak his language, so we did an audio recording with him or, and his um, grandson. That's him. Oh, no, that's not the one in the studio. No, but um, there we go, looking like a rock star. Um, so he is, he is, he's really is. There, there was this huge bonus of doing the, um, the glossary, which was that it meant that all the staff at the MCA, at the Art Gallery of South Australia, and at the touring locations have a level of confidence that they can bring when discussing their artwork, which is really prohibitive in the Australian context. People are afraid to speak Aboriginal languages um, because they don't know how it's meant to sound or what they're meant to do. So by providing this resource, we actually unlocked a whole lot of the exhibition to people. Um, so aside from the glossary, the films, we've got all the artworks in high resolution, we've got acknowledgements of all the locations that the exhibition will tour to and a, a cultural warning, all these things are part of a sort of Indigenous level of safety that we need to, to provide for the artist and the communities. Um, what else is there? There's a biography. This is a biography. Uh, uh, we're just going to show a few, few screens of the, the process of, so we've been a few times in Maningrida. So to go to Arnhem Land, so Western Arnhem Land, so 200 kilometers east of Darwin, for filming specifically, uh, you have to go in a very specific period because there's the, the, the wet season. So the two years period was not short <laughs> and, and we had to really understand what was possible or not possible and to be in their rhythm, be part of it and they were directing us in terms of what to do or not to do. Uh, this is a screen of the, the complexity of the dual language, so how to bring his voice, a transliteration of his voice and also the English in, in a dual caption uh, system. So of course importance of listening and do documenting the artist's voice. A uh, few slides, but I want to show you, that's another map of uh, location. I want to show you an, an extract of one video, so it's the first vignette, just to listen the two first minutes of his voice. Yeah, I Johnny Mountain history. I already history raw come up and at many new new generation new band history good men history good men history but I got me history now yeah I got me history. New generation history, all people. Kunuyang Aduk Maunjul, Maunjul Nagurul, Johnny Maunjul. Maka, what? More, what? Now we quarrel on Alaman history, Nakamin Gula women in Dorobo, Kunkula, Lark, only. Boy, glad that I'm glad we're meeting. Now, what are we going to do? History, new generation, Maranda. Yo, carry ball at me. Man, I want ball game new. Man, getting it at me. New generation. What my agar me my. So I just want to uh, highlight briefly that all of the digital resources are owned by John and the Manangrita community. If at any point they want to take that, uh, we're, we're the custodians for it for now, we're caretaking for it. If they want that back at any moment, we, we will return it to them, obviously. It's their cultural knowledge. Um, and everything that we've done was driven by, by Balang. Everything that he 
asked for, we, we you know, put on our digital producing hat and translated it into this site. We made sure that it was entirely directed by the artist, which sadly is not the norm in the Australian context working with Indigenous artists. I think I've got zero second there, but um, just few references. Uh, I suppose it will be online at one stage. Uh, the, the, the site had few awards. Um, Balang had a lot of awards during his career. I remember filming him in 2003 for the Clemenger Award in, in, in Melbourne. So it's a long history of, of him winning. Uh, and so when he, he knew about the different award, he said, yeah, that's normal, another one. <laughs> <laughs> and we were so excited about it. Um, Few, few dot points of that what we learn through the, the journey, which was really the importance of listening, the importance of putting the artist up front and in the center of everything we were doing, um, and the complexity of transmitting knowledge and concept, and be, try to be invisible in that process, including the design and the simplicity of it. Just one more 10 second thing, because I've noticed the importance of the resource to the artist family. Uh, the catalog that was printed was huge, fat, really expensive to ship. The exhibition, it's touring, but it's not touring to Man and Greta, where this community are based. Uh, having all these resources online has been a huge, really invaluable thing for the community, which has been said back to us um, that Balang's family are often on the site, the Man and Greta Art Centre use our glossary for new staff. The, the benefits of the project and doing it well and having a deep listening relationship have been so much greater than we could have anticipated. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mandang.